you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. So I should probably start this video by clarifying one thing. And that is, I am not saying that if Vince and company didn't leave Manchester City, that they would have definitely won the league title. Because, of course, they still have Liverpool to compete with, who have, at the end of the day, have only lost one Premier League game all season. But what I'm saying is that they would certainly not have fell off to the point now where they are 20 plus points behind Liverpool in the league table and would have at least given a real title challenge all the way to the very end just like they did in the 2018-19 season. But today I want to talk about why it's so important for teams to have a captain and leader figure in the dressing room. Not just about why Man City missed a centre-back in Vincent Company. But before we get into that, a little bit of background first. So it was at the end of the 2018-19 season when Vincent Company announced the shock decision that he wouldn't be retiring but that he would be leaving Manchester City to take on a fairly surprising role as a player manager at Belgian Pro League club Anderlecht. It was then that people started realising that Man City, of course, needed to go out and sign a centre-back in order to fill that void, with only Nicolas Otamendi, John Stones and Emmerich Laporte at the club at the time. Now, in the summer of the, before the Premier League season started this year, they did actually try to sign a centre-back, and in particular, we do know that they tried to sign Harry Maguire, of course, pipped to him by their local rivals, Manchester United. Now, the thing is with Manchester City that you have to realise is that they don't panic. If they don't get the signing and the target that they're after, they won't try and get second and third best. They will stick to their guns and go with what they've got. This is no more bare example than the season before when they attempted to sign Jorginho from, at the time, Napoli. Of course, Jorginho went to join Chelsea and his former manager, Maurizio Sarri, meaning that they missed out on him. Instead of panicking in that situation, they go, no, right, we stick with Fernandinho, we stick with Delft for this season. They go and win the title and then next season, which was the start of the, the, the Premier League season this year, they go out and sign Rodri and finally get that replacement. So it's very important to realise that they don't panic if they can't get the player that they want. And that's the case of what happened here. Of course, they tried to get Harry Maguire, who, yeah, of course, not quite the leader, the recognisable leader and captain figure of Vincent Company, but certainly a very good centre-back. And it's also important to mention that he does have captain traits as well. Of course, he was made the captain at Manchester United this season. So the leadership figure is there and you can certainly blend that out of him and get more out of him as the seasons go on. As I've mentioned, it wasn't just about the fact that they'd lost a centre-back and they needed one because, let's face it, the abilities of Nicolas Otamendi and this season John Stones as well have come under question from fans due to some rather suspect performances. But it's also about trying to get in a captain as well, a leader. Without company in the dressing room, you fail to really see a true captain. Now, of course, there are leaders in the dressing room in other senses. And what I mean by that is a lot of people talk about, say, for example, Harry Kane, for example. He's the captain of England and the vice captain of Spurs. Now, he has leader tendencies. He leads, by example, on the pitch. But he's not quite the all-out captain figure, say, the Jordan Henderson, the uh, Roy Keane that we talk about, the Patrick Vieira, who really ball and shout on the field, the one who get the team together and get them going again. And that's the problem that Man City had this season. David Silva gets made captain in the end. The captain's armband floats about a little bit. You know, it goes to Kevin De Bruyne occasionally. It goes to Fernandinho sometimes. And the captain's armband is really pushed around every so often because they don't have that standout captain figure. The best way to really showcase this example, and I would implore any of you to watch this, is the All or Nothing series on Amazon Prime. They did a Man City series on All or Nothing and it goes behind the scenes. It wasn't this season, but it was the first season in which they had won the Premier League under Pep Guardiola. You really see there the sort of influence that Vincent Company has on the dressing room. There's one uh, scene in which Man City have just played against Man United and Liverpool. So it was their, the biggest week of the season. They get knocked out of the Champions League by Liverpool um, over two legs. And then three days later, they have the chance to put it right. They face off against Manchester United, local rivals, and they have the chance to win the title that day against United. They lose that game as well. And so all of a sudden, you know, in Manchester City terms, that's a very 
a very poor week and obviously confidence is knocked as a result. But afterwards, you see Vince and company is the one, the true captain figure who gets a team together, takes them out and gets the confidence and just to boost the morale a little bit and says, you know, we regroup, we get together and we go again. And that's really what I feel like Man City have been truly missing this season. It wasn't just the case of they don't have a centre-back, which, you know, that was also an issue as well. Of course, Fernandinho and Rodri have played there plenty of times this season due to the fact that they've been missing centre-backs and they've had injury problems, but also the fact that they didn't have that captain. They didn't have that leader figure to pull them through uh, situations. And it had ended up creating a lot of inconsistency amongst the season. There was actually one streak of games during the season. It was between November and December that I want to talk about to really give you a, the best example. So they have a run of five games, Man City do, in both the league and the Champions League. So they have Atalanta, and then they have Liverpool, they have Chelsea, Shakhtar Donetsk, and then Newcastle. So you look at that from the outside, say you have a quick look, and you go, yeah, you know, there's a couple of tough games in there, uh, you know, Liverpool away probably don't win that game they've got Chelsea as well but they're at home so you know you probably edge them to win that game as well so you say well probably four out of five that I think they win four out of five of those games they actually win one they win one out of those five games and that is a perfect example of this follow that up with the next two fixtures they return against Burnley and they beat them fairly comfortably as well I think it was 4-1 in the end and then they move on to Man United and they lose that game as well so in the end, that ends up becoming two wins in seven games. Now, you know, that's really poor form for anyone. It's not crisis level, but it's it's poor form for any team. But for a Pep Guardiola team, that is virtually unheard of. You know, I don't know of a time when a Pep Guardiola team has gone seven games with only two wins. You know, that, that's quite extreme to say the least. And when you're chasing a team like Liverpool who just don't lose for the majority of the season, you know, you cannot be giving up those sort of points. And that's sort of really what I'm getting at here. In the past years, with company at the helm during the Pep Guardiola era, you wouldn't have found them going seven games only winning two, two of them. Because they've got the leader in company who you know regroups them together, they get the confidence back, they get the morale back a little bit, and he just sort of settles them into the game and says, you know, look, we keep going. Again, of course, now there were question marks over companies injury concerns and you know they were legitimate there were plenty of times over the years of Man City not just under Guardiola where he did miss uh, you know maybe a couple of months in a season because of injury because of thigh and muscle problems etc now you know I don't deny that but the thing is with companies that his influence carries even when they're not on the field you know even though he's he's uh, you know they're not playing he's not playing games he's still there he's still in and around the dressing room and he's the one keeping spirits high and just making players level-headed and really getting them back to the basics when they need to. But even when he's on the pitch as well, yes, he's a centre-back and he doesn't influence the game as much as, say, someone like a David Silva or a Kevin De Bruyne would from the central of midfield. But what you'll find is when, say, things aren't going their way, he's the one who calms the guys down, gets them, you know, going again, just says, you know, we just keep, we keep building at this, we keep just plucking away, and finally we get there. And that was a problem with a lot of the games during those, not just that poor for run of form, but the inconsistency overall is that they couldn't finish teams off or they couldn't set up you know sort of set up shop and and prevent the other team from scoring past them and that was a real issue that you found without company in that setup and this is something that comes down to all teams as well not just Manchester City I completely believe that you cannot have a prolonged period of success with a team without a true captain figure can you name me any team in world football either now, past or present, who have been successful, who don't have that captain, that true leader figure. You know, I really struggle to find any because it's so important and integral to having that success. You know, we look at Liverpool right now, for example, Virgil van Dijk and Jordan Henderson, the two standout captain and leader figures. You know, they don't just have one, they have two. And that's part of the reason, obviously not everything, but it's part of the reason, it's one of the pieces of the puzzle why they can have that success. And we look at teams who have fell off over the years. For example, uh, you know, a really good one to look at is Arsenal. Now, you know, I've been saying this about Arsenal for a long time. You know, they've lost leaders, they've lost captains, and they haven't 
re-signed them or they haven't bred them and that has been a massive massive issue now of course there have been other problems at, at that club as well with the likes of the defense and stuff and people have said sort of aggressing holding midfielders etc etc but one thing they've missed that they still haven't replaced is that true captain figure and i'm going back to the days of the likes of patrick vieira and 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 so on and so forth you know they really haven't replaced those guys um and that can have a massive massive bearing on why they can't you know, have prolonged periods of success, in particular in the league, because over the course of a league season, you've got to be playing week in, week out at a consistent level. And part of that is having those leader figures to regroup guys when it's not going right, to keep their level, their heads leveled when it's going really well, not get complacent, but also when it's not going so well, can build them up again and they can get going again. This is also something that I think has not been covered by the press enough. You know, when we look at, say, you know, in the punditry and stuff, say, when Man City play and they're in the studio, whether it be Sky Sports or BT Sport, uh, and say Man City have come off the bat of a, a bad result and, and etc., they never really mention the fact that they're missing this true captain, this true leader figure. And that, to me, is really puzzling because I think it's such an important part and it's so strange that they, you know, they talk about the centre back issue, which of course is the biggest issue on the team in terms of ability. But, you know, you've also got to look at the fact that they're lacking a captain, they're lacking a leader. Yes, they have players like De Bruyne, like Silva, like Aguero, like Fernandinho, who lead by example on the pitch, but they don't lead, uh, you know, with their voice, with their mouths, with the, their actions and what they do off the pitch. And so that is a big, big problem. And I think that's certainly the area that Man City have to look at going into the transfer window next year. If they can sign a centre-back who is also a, a renowned figure, a renowned leader, that would go such, such a long way um, to, to get them back to where they're looking to be. Because at the moment, you know, you see the, how they fell off compared to Liverpool. And I think there is such a, a big correlation. It's so easy to see it that without that leader... They're really, really lacking in, in that department and they will not have those prolonged periods of success, in particular in the league, without replacing Vince and company. So they've really struggled. Yes, uh, you know, no problem at all that they've, they've tried to get Harry Maguire. They don't want to panic because they lose him and therefore, you know, they decide not to go out. That's no problem at all. I've got no problem with teams not panicking and not settling for third and fourth best, etc. But coming ahead to this transfer window, it is a big, big need now. And they just have to go all out, in my opinion, to get what they can uh, in terms of a true captain and a centre-back on top of that. So that's really my thoughts on it, guys. I'm really interested to know what you think about it as well. This was, of course, my first sort of real football video. And so we're sort of testing the waters here, as I spoke about recently. I do want to start doing these real football videos. Um, and this is certainly a, a, a topic that I think does get enough um, sort of publicity that I felt really strongly about in terms of you know captains and teams and stuff so um, yeah let me know what you think do you agree with me that Vince and company leaving and the fact that they haven't got that captain figure is sort of part a big part of the reason why Man City have fell off so much or do you think there's there's something else to it let me know in the comment section down below um, and I'll be sure to get back to you and, and answer as, as much as I can don't forget to leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and most importantly subscribe to the channel for more regular gaming content. Don't forget to ring the bell as well so that you get notifications every time I upload and don't miss a video. And on that note we are going to finish it off there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Come on.